We are here at Oshkosh Air Venture, second day in, starting to get nice here. And I'm Dan Johnson. Today I'm speaking with John Hurst, the Director of Sales and Technology for Lockwood Aviation. Did I get that about right, John? <laughs> That'll work, yeah. That'll work. It's pretty close anyway. <laughs> That's it, does yeah. a lot of good work for the uh, folks down there at Sebring under the name Lockwood. Uh, John has been associated with light sport aircraft for a long time and he's a go-to guy for many people. But you had a special experience here. Yes, We're sir. standing in front of the air cam, one of my favorite airplanes, the one I got my twin engine or multi-engine rating in. And uh, that was pretty cool, but there's something different about this one that makes this unique in all the world and pretty special in this country right now because this has the new Rotex 912 IS, the fuel injected model. So you flew this all the way here from Sebring, right, John? Tell us yes, about sir. that. Yeah, it was actually pretty exciting. Um, you know, most of my experience has been in light sport airplanes where I actually fly a little bit higher <laughs> than I do in the air cam. I got to see most of the country from 5,000 feet. I'm sorry, 500 feet. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I don't yeah. know what you do doing up at yeah, 5,000. So. I, I get a nosebleed up there in this. Um, and that was pretty exciting. I really enjoyed the view. What was, uh, what was really neat was uh, the experience with the new 912 IS engine. Uh, and to see uh, the lower fuel burn and the smoother running engine compared to the uh, the carbureted engine, which is a fine engine, by the way. We've had a lot of a lot of a great experience with that. So you don't have numbers for us because you haven't had time to do all that yet, having just arrived. But it was demonstrably better on fuel consumption. Oh, for sure. Yeah, every single fuel stop, uh, I was putting more fuel in the left tank than I was in the right tank. And you were drawn out of those tanks, so you, yep, the, the, you have that information. This, then? this, the right tank is dedicated for the right engine, left tank dedicated for the left. There's okay. no cross feed. Each time, a significantly less amount of fuel went in the right tank. Uh, we were careful to make sure we had the same power settings on both. Um, and it, it was amazing. I was I was really surprised. The Rotex folks are saying it's about 21 percent, a number they've obviously evaluated to have that precise a figure. But let's call it 20 percent, just to round it off. That's quite a bit less fuel usage in an engine that normally burns at cruise four, four and a half. Is that about right? In this airplane and cruise, uh, the other one, I mean. Oh, the other one, yeah. That airplane and cruise, I was burning about 3.25 gallons an hour. Okay, and what were you burning in this one then? Maybe know. two and a half, two point eight. You know, it just you know. Again, I have to go crunch the numbers. I can't commit to anything. Sure, no, but, we understand you that. You know, but it was this one was less than three that gallons an hour all the way up. To so now this is at cruise. This is not during climb and so forth. Yeah. Uh, but at the time when you're burning the fuel that you normally consume the most at a cruising situation, below three gallons per hour out of this hundred horsepower engine, that's pretty spectacular. Yeah, so, a really interesting thing. Well. Since this is the first one that I've seen installed, I know we got a couple more, I think, out here on the field. I think the Pipistrelle folks have one of them installed as well. But what was the effort of installation on this that was different than the other one? There are some differences between the two. Summarize yeah, those the, for the us. The biggest differences are the computer, the fuse box, the fuel pumps that you need to install. Also, uh, there's quite a bit more wiring running from the engine up front for the switches and controls. Um, this is all because of the electronic control? Correct. So yes. The other engine does not have these qualities. Correct. And what does electronic control do for this engine? What it does is it really optimizes everything. So you're running the EGTs are just are always optimal. We had all four EGTs hooked up on this. And what I noticed was is they were just peaked out all the time. Right, parked right where they need to be. So the computer is doing this. Correct. It's the electronic control unit we call it. Is yes, that correct? The, yeah, the ECU. Yeah, it's monitoring all four EGTs and it's just it's looking at the, the manifold pressure, the, it's got a throttle position sensor, the computer's turning all that data, and it's just basically tuning the engine constantly to run at the, at the uh, optimum mixture. Like having a little tiny mechanic sitting up there constantly exactly. adjusting. Yeah, right? it's really amazing to see, you know, to see each EGT all at peak, all exactly the same, all and the it, time. And that's the way that it's able to economize or optimize, to use your word, the fuel economy then, to drink, bring it down just by surely running the engine more uh, adeptly, I guess. Exactly, and, and this engine does run uh, considerably smoother than the other. The other is a sewing machine already. And this one is, it's amazing. You'd almost think you had an electric motor back here. Is that right? Actually, yeah. you can notice the difference in smoothness. I, I definitely, offline. yes sir, yes. Of course, let's see, how many hours was that now? This is a, this is a reasonably flat, fast airplane, but it's an open cockpit style airplane, basically. It, so what was, the, what was the flight time? A little here? over 15 hours. 15 hours. So that's mm -hmm. quite a bit of exposure to know this then. Yeah. Not like what I usually get to do is an hour or 45 minutes in an airplane. Mm -hmm. Hard to judge very much then. 15 hours allows you to judge a lot. Yeah, yeah. Excellent, so. Got to know it well. 
So uh, more information about the Rotax we'll find at their website. John will give us that information later. But speaking of websites, uh, you have just been doing a yeoman's duty of completely refashioning the Lockwood Aviation website yes. where a lot of people go to buy stuff uh, heavily to do with Rotax but also other things. What's been the effort there and what have you achieved briefly? Well, that's that's been a, it was a long road. Um, it was amazing uh, how much I learned actually. <laughs> Um, but the you know the idea was is to create you know for a pilot and a maintainer to create a website for pilots and maintainers. So this is something maintainers of airplanes. Maintainers of aircraft, yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. So this is something that uh, you're going to look at and it's going to kind of make sense to you. Um, we did some things that you just don't see other places. If you look at, for example, if you look for a part, it's not available. It's discontinued or whatever. The website suggests a substitute for you might be able to use. Um, engine diagrams, the sub assembly diagrams are all on the website to tell you, you know, okay, here's, here's a blow up of the, of the cylinders, for example, here's all the parts, um, and you can look at the diagram, order your parts right from there. Well, you showed me around this website a little bit. By the way, it works real good on an iPad. Turn the iPad sideways, it's like optimized for that. But one of the cool things that I thought about it was the ability to have expanding those drawings. This is not a fixed image on the web that if you enlarge it, it gets where you can't even hardly tell what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. These enlarge really well. Thank you. So you can zoom in on the part mm -hmm. and then you can identify the part and I believe you said that also could tell you if it was in stock or not. Yes, yeah, it'll tell you on the page with the drawing the stock status of that part and again if it's out of stock and there is a sub available it'll tell you, hey, the substitute, this may not be here but we have this sub and you're welcome to use this one. So you want to go explore around on this website. Uh, John, if you will, please give us the address of the website. Now, it's changed a little bit from what it used to be, yeah, as the website changed a lot. So give us the web address. Yeah, it's actually an all-new website. Um, we, we completely started from scratch. And it's www.lockwood.aero. That's A-E-R-O. OK, we'll put, up that, we'll put that on the screen as well for folks that are watching. Uh, this going out on YouTube and a number of other websites. People are at their computer anyway. So Lockwood.Aero. Tell us a little bit more about other things to do with uh, the Lockwood organization. You also do airplanes and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's a different web address, is it? Or is it all through the same one? Well, you can find pretty much all, all of our different uh, companies at Lockwood.Aero. There's a link for everything. We have, uh, you know, of course, Lockwood Aviation Supply, which is sort of the mother company. That's the, that's, that's the, that's the main one, the bread and butter there. And then we have uh, Lockwood Aviation Repair. Uh, where we do service on Rotax powered, uh, all Rotax powered airplanes, of course. We have uh, Lockwood Aircraft, uh, which manufactures this fine aircraft right here. And another one we like uh, called the Drifter. Yes, and the Drifter, yes, which uh, this one was, was basically based on. Yeah, this on. is basically a large Drifter, drifter. on steroids yeah. <laughs> or something, uh, and with an extra engine thrown on there for good measure. Yeah. And I've gotten the pleasure to fly, I think, virtually all those airplanes over time, several different models of Drifters and now the air cam and you can find all that information on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com speaking today with john hurst of lockwood.aero these days i'm dan johnson here at oshkosh air venture